So I've been studying all day for my test tomorrow on different diabetic drugs and I have been sucking at it. So I started doing some little doodles and making up little stories to help myself remember. And I thought, hey, maybe the rest of the world could benefit from this because if I'm sucking at memorizing alpha glucosidase alpha glucosidase inhibitors that maybe other people are struggling too. So I put together a few little ridiculous stories to help you remember the different types of diabetic drugs. Um, so please be nice to me in the comments. I know they're ridiculous, but just enjoy and bear with me and just go with it. The whole point is just to be a memory jog and help you remember when the test comes. It's not supposed to be like, you know, Dr. Seuss quality stories, but hope you enjoy. Once upon a time, there lived a man named Lord Farquaad, and there also was a woman named Ivanka Trump. Both of them were very prejudiced. Lord Far Farquaad hated enchanted creatures with magical powers, such as Pinocchio or fairies. And Ivanka Trump, you know, just like her relative Donald, didn't like Mexicans. So they both, you know, tried to do the best that they could to get rid of them, but Shrek kind of foiled Lord, Lord Farquaad's plans and he couldn't get rid of the enchanted creatures and the government just simply wouldn't fund the getting rid of the Mexicans so Ivanka Trump was out of a job. So they decided to get together and become a team and call themselves the SGLT2 inhibitors. But no one could remember that and it wasn't very catchy. So they decided to call themselves the Flozens instead. So they actually got married and changed their name and their last name now is Flozen. So they started a company together where they do border patrol inside the kidney. So they work here and their job is just to be basically prejudiced all day long against glucose because they're like, hey, I don't like sugar because it's sweeter than me and it makes me feel bad about myself because I'm not sweet and it reminds me of a terrible person I am because I'm prejudiced. So let's get rid of them. So they're here in the blood vessel and they're watching all the electrolytes, that's where the little dots are, and you know, like sodium and potassium and all this other stuff the body needs. And whenever they see glucose, they're like, uh-uh, stop. You're not getting reabsorbed back into my body because we don't want your type here. You can just exit right now and get out of this body. So they kick them out because they're prejudiced and they kick out the glucose and make it leave the body and go into the kidney where all the other ones get to go back into the body because they're like, oh, well, you know, electrolytes, you're fine, but glucose, nah. So they kick them out in the kidney, and then the kidney gets rid of all the sugar and all the glucose, and it comes out in the pee. And they like to call themselves the Flozens because I think it's really hilarious because they say, oh, the glucose can just flow right out, and it just flows in all day long. So now you know why Lord Farquaad married Ivanka Trump. Let's take a field trip to the land of GLP-1. GLP-1 is the name of a true city, aka Trulicity, where people live. Everyone in this city of GLP-1 are wannabes. They want to be just like Incretin. And so they daily and weekly and monthly hold competitions on who can be the best Incretin mimetic. Basically, they're acting, they're acting who can be the best at acting like Incretin because they all just want to be just like Incretin. And so Betty is one person that lives in the city of GLP-1. She's also known as Bayetta, but no one can pronounce that, so they call her Betty, and she's elderly, as you can see by her little glasses, because I just don't know anyone who's young named Betty. Anyways, so B Betty was really happy because... One day, she had been practicing to be the best Incretin mimetic wannabe that she could. And finally, she won and got first place trophy and she gained the victory, a.k.a. Victoza. The other thing about Betty you should know is that she has a very big stomach. As you can see, most of her is a belly. And that's because, unfortunately, she has a lot of GI symptoms. She often has bloating and gastroparesis sometimes. That's just part of, you know, day in the life of a GLP-1 resident. But in her spare time, she enjoys going surfing. 
Yes, yes, folks, surfing. Hang 10, as, they, as the kids say. She likes it so much that she might also be known as Exenatide, as her nickname, because she enjoys the tides. Yes, folks, the coming in and coming out of the tide of the ocean. She just loves the tides so much. And that's, you know, everyone in this city loves surfing so much that all of them decided to take Tide as a nickname. So everyone everywhere has taken on the last name of Tide. So everyone here is known as the Tide people. Xenotide is one example. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed learning about the city of GLP-1 and its inhabitants and one particular resident named Betty who won the victory in the true city. The end. Now it's time that you met this girl. This girl is just a straight up hater. You can tell because she has her nose stuck up in the air and she has a lot of eye makeup on and she's got one of those high ponytails because I don't know, but for some reason girls with really high ponytails tend to be haters. Anyways, she's a hater because she'd always look at Betty and get upset because she's always winning victories and whatnot. And she's just always trying to put Betty down. She's like, I don't like them people in GLP-1 land because I just don't like them. They're different from me, so I just, I'm going to try and put them down as much as possible. <sighs> so she is a class one hater. She's upset because the only award she's ever gotten was the lame award. She's upset because Betty is always winning victories for being the best Incretin mimetic. But all that she can get... Her name is Jan, by the way. At least that's what she calls herself. Her name is really Genuvia because she's got some of those extra parents that try to, like, turn names into something extra and fancy. You know, people that spell, like, Grace, like G-R-A-Y-S-E to try and be special and different. Anyway, so Genuvia, because Janet or Jan wouldn't suffice, gets the lame award because she's not really all that effective. The only thing that she can do is bring down the A1C by 0 0.5 because she's always too busy trying to bring down and inhibit, you know, the GLP-1 landers. So if she had just do her own job rather than always trying to take down other people, then maybe she'd get farther in life, but no. And as you can see by her stick legs, which are just lines, she's super skinny because her meds that she's on to try and make her less of a hater actually uh, don't cause weight gain, which is good for her, not so great for Fat Betty over there, but whatever. But because she's so skinny and bony, she has a lot of joint pain sometimes. Like, she sits down on her rear, and there ain't no cushion to support that. She's just sitting on bone. So sometimes she has some joint pain, but I don't feel bad for her because she's a hater. So that's Jan. And now, folks, it's time to meet Matt Foreman, or Matt for short, Matt Foreman. Everyone knows him because he's got, he's got such a great form. Mm, look at those muscles. You know, he's so strong, and everyone just wants to be with him. In fact, he's everyone's first choice. Yeah, first choice above all other guys out there because he's just, mm, everyone's just warm for his form. Anyways, everyone's like, yo, Matt, how are you so strong, though? And he's like, well, I work really, really hard at this gym called Kidney's Gym. And I work really hard there. So that's why, like, I'm just so strong. Yeah. But Matt also has a part-time job. Not only does he work really hard at Kidney's Gym, but he also has a part-time job as a road or street crossing controller. Okay, see he has this stop sign and part of the reason why he's also got super great muscles is because he's got to lift this heavy stop sign all day long and sometimes twirls it around fancy like a peacock twirls its feathers to attract the ladies and what he does is he stops all the glucose he stops the liver from making more he stops the intestine from absorbing it so he's just stopping all the glucose left and right up and down and all over and this is supposed to be a fart cloud the only thing really wrong with Matt that the ladies don't tend to like is that he tends to fart a lot. 
when you first get to know him. But then after a while, you get used to it and it doesn't bother you as much. One of the ladies that is super into Matt is actually Genuvia, which isn't, you know, hard to hard to believe because, you know, she's one of those popular hater girls and they always got to be with the most popular guy. And so remember that Genuvia is kind of lame and she's not super great at what she does. So in an effort to be less lame and be more effective, she's like, I'm going to totally date Matt. And so she got together with Matt and she put their name and a heart together. And since she's always trying to be super popular, she did that thing that, you know, celebrities do when they combine their names together, like a cute couple name, like Brad and Angelina became Brangelina. So she's like, I know exactly what we're going to call ourselves. We're going to be Janumet, like totally. So that's how you bring Matt and Jan together. Want to increase your insulin levels but don't want to break the bank? Introducing the Eide Brothers. Meet Glyburide, Glyplizide, and Glimapride, or as they like to be called, Gly, Glip, and Glime. The Eide Brothers. They guarantee to increase your insulin levels without breaking the bank for a low, low cost of food. They refuse to work without food, so be sure to eat some pizza, banana, or some cookies, or whatever. They'll work real hard. This one has a hat on because he's the cool one. Just call the number at your bottom of your screen, 1-800-SULFONORIAS, to increase your insulin levels. I forgot to introduce you to Meg. Remember the Eyed Brothers? Well, I forgot to mention their sister Meg, or Meglitonide. She tried to be part of the Eyed Brothers, but they were sexist and said a woman can't do the work that they do, and they think they're the only ones that can increase insulin. But actually, she's super strong and way stronger than them, and she does the job way faster, too. So she decided to create her own business and have her own phone number. So she has 1-800-PRANDON because she just couldn't deal with her brothers being sexist and everyone else being sexist. But unfortunately, hardly anyone ever calls her. They usually always call the Eyed Brothers because the world is sexist and doesn't believe that women can do the same job as men, even if she's stronger and faster than they are. So, yeah, call Meg if you're cool. There once was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. Let me back up. Let me introduce you to this lady named Deb. Deb once used to be a little girl. And when she was a little girl, people used to call her Little Debbie. But then... Little Debbie had a real sweet tooth and she decided, you know, I just really love chocolate cupcakes and Twinkies and those pecan rolls. So I'm just gonna eat these all day. And then she got fat and got the diabetes. Diabetes mellitus, yep. And then she became known as Fat Deborah. So Fat Deborah was sad because she had the sugar. And then one day she met a fly named Henry. And Henry was a very smart fly. In fact, you could say he was precocious. Yeah, precocious because he was so smart. And Henry the fly, actually Henry didn't even like being called a fly. He loved sugar so much, just like Fat Deborah, or he loved sugar or glucose so much that he wanted to be called a gly. G for glucose. He abandoned his identity as a fly and wanted to be called a gly to represent glucose. So anyways, Henry the gly went up to Fat Deborah and was like, hey, I have a proposition for you. And she was like, oh yeah, what? He's like, how about you swallow me and I can travel into your intestines and then you don't have to change your lifestyle at all. You can eat whatever you want. Like you can eat all the Coke and ice cream and candy and lollipops. And you know what? I'll just be in your intestines and I'll eat it all for you so that you know, you can eat what you want, but it doesn't get absorbed into your body. So it's like you didn't even have it. And it's the best of both worlds because I get free candy and sugar and glucose. And then you don't have to have any bad consequences. And she goes, yeah, that's a great idea. So she swallowed the fly. And no, she did not die, plot twist. But she did have a lot of other problems. Because Henry ate so much, like he was a pig. I realize he's a fly, but he was a pig in this circumstance. He would 
poop a lot and fart a lot because that's what happens when you eat. That's a poop emoji right there. And so he would poop a lot and it would come out and then she would just end up having a lot of diarrhea and flatulence. And she felt really horrible and awful because you know that saying where they have butterflies in your stomach? Well, she had a fly in her intestines. So that's why she felt awful. So it really wasn't even worth it. And she regretted all of her life decisions. And she wished that she could die sometimes. That's how bad she felt. Anyways, that's all for now. Catch us later in the next episode of Fat Deborah.